very busy day for him as well is our Lafayette City Parish President Joel Robodeau joining us on the line. Sir, thanks for the time this morning. And I know it's been busy. I know you took another aerial tour. What can you tell us, sir? Yeah, and thanks for your patience, Bernie. Oh, you're welcome. The uh, ability to let me kind of share some information. Yes, sir. Um, I'm not sure of the last update that y'all had received from anyone, but the aerial aerial tour looks like, um, you know, as long as we don't get any uh, more serious rain, um, that uh, the coolie system looks to have dropped a little bit. So there's some room there, which should help with some of the the streets and and those kinds of things. But it's going to be a slow process is what the weather folks are telling us. Uh, the river stages, they don't expect to go down for at least another 24 hours, mm. probably longer than that, okay. um, which means ultimately uh, there's going to still be a lot of homes with water in it uh, for the next, you know, couple of days. Uh, you know, and it's just absolutely heartbreaking, um, and at least 24 hours, possibly longer, as you're saying. And so we cannot stress enough for those folks who were evacuated or evacuated themselves, they need to stay put, right? Yeah, well, so right now we're kind of transitioning from this, you know, um, emergency response rescue effort now mm-hmm. into this damage assessment and trying to get with the folks at FEMA and the state to make sure that, uh, you know, we're able to, to start documenting everything. What we don't want to have to do is is go backwards, back to the rescue, because people are ignoring barricades and driving. Um, if the barricades are still up, that means because the water is deep enough that um, that they're still dangerous uh, to drive on. And so we ask for people to, you know, please obey those barricades and, and use good sense and good judgment um, and then not put us back to where we're having to do these rescues. Yeah, that's nothing but a waste of time, you know, in the sightseers. And then you may end up pushing more water into somebody's home. And, and yep. you know, we just don't need that. Now, let me ask you, uh, Mayor President, how did it all start? I mean, it. The effort has been amazing, but it took a lot of combined effort. You know, these showers start rolling in on Friday, and then suddenly here comes this disaster. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're looking at it now, 25, 26 inches of rain. Certainly no one would have uh, predicted that. I mean, it's just not something that's even imaginable. Um, and as it starts happening and the, the flooding and we start to get those those river gauges and we start to get the numbers, we realize um, that this is this is a different situation, and so the emergency folks here in town, the 911, Craig Stansberry and Linda LeBron, their group, you know, they're monitoring that stuff all the time, and 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 then when they notice that this is a different situation, they got us all in, and everyone started uh, with the sheriff's office and all the law enforcement and the emergency personnel. Uh, we started putting the plan together, and just uh, and then you you just start doing what you have to do, and it's. Uh, it's been as great as experience as it could be working with everybody. It's been as smooth as it could be mm-hmm. um, uh, in what was a very rapidly developing emergency. Yeah. What did it look like? How can you describe what you saw? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's still some pockets. Youngsville was hit incredibly hard. Um, there's still islands where those people can't get out at all. We're, we're trying to figure out a way now we're going to send in some boats to get a, a list of needs. We're going to bring in water and some MREs for them because we don't know when they're going to even be able to get out of their neighborhood. Um, so, you know, there, there's still some places that are in really, really bad shape. There's still a lot of dangerous water on Verot School Road. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, we're just hoping that, that people will, will listen to the warnings and and like I said, not put us back in a rescue uh, situation. Have you made a determination about a curfew for tonight or not yet? We haven't yet. I mean, my gut is, Bernie, that there's not going to be a curfew. Mm-hmm. We've got an update with um, with the weather folks in GOSEP, I think, at 1 o'clock, mm-hmm. um, just to, to make sure that the weather patterns haven't changed from what they said this morning. Um, but right now they're they're saying we're looking at maybe getting another inch of rain or so. And if that's the case, we should be able to handle it. Um, so right now my gut is no, um, you know, of course they didn't predict 20 something inches of rain either. So if the weather pattern changes, then, then that may change, but right now, no. Okay. Now we are keeping as updated as possible with the list of roadway closings. People are impatient. They do want to get home. I can completely understand that, but I also understand, as you have said, you know, people need to stay put because you don't want it to have to turn back into a, a rescue situation. So my question would be, 
uh, law enforcement, in addition to all of the other things that they're doing, are they keeping up with, with the road closures and when roads are opening, et cetera? Yeah, well, what I'll do is I'll make sure, and uh, at the 1 o'clock briefing, uh, I'll make sure to relay that message. out. If, if it hadn't been updated, let's get it updated um, so that folks will know. And, um, and, you know, the barricades are the best indicator because once we're open the road, that's, you know, the first thing we'll do is we're going to go remove barricades. So, um, but I'll get that, uh, I'll get that information from, um, from the emergency personnel and we'll make sure that the list is updated for you guys. Okay. And at this point, does the parish then try to seek funds from the federal government or how does that work? Yeah, the process is, you know, the parish has to make a declaration, which of course we have. Then the state ends up making a declaration if it warrants it. So if it was just us or just Livingston or Tangibahoa, the state may have not made that declaration. Mm. With all of us um, in a similar situation, the state went ahead and made that declaration yesterday, which means that now it goes to FEMA at the federal level for them to decide whether or not um, it's going to be a FEMA. Uh, disaster. And if so, then they will share, the federal government will share in the cost. Um, but if they don't, then it's on us in the state uh, to pay for, you know, whatever the cost associated with the damages are. We're hoping that FEMA will see the need and then get, and if that does in fact happen, it's up to 75% reimbursement from the federal government. Wow. Still kind of tough though, because I mean, it's not like we have a bunch of money to throw around though either. Yeah, I mean, we don't have the money. Certainly the state doesn't have the money. The feds don't have the money, but the money's got to be there. You know, this is what people, you know, That's first why and foremost taxes, pay yeah. their taxes for. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, we're going to find the money and we're going to, we're going to do everything we can to, to, to get everything restored back to how it needs to be. Um, but we are keeping our fingers crossed that, that FEMA will accept this as a federal declaration. All right, Joel Robodeau, our mayor president. Sir, thank you very much for your time this morning. We appreciate the update. All right, Bernie, thanks. Okay, thank you. Coming up now on 1223, I say this morning, it's now moved into afternoon. afternoon. I apologize. (laughs) I'm so used to working morning, so, you know, sorry about that. But uh, 1223 in the afternoon, I want to read to you. This is from the Broussard Police Department. US 90 westbound and one lane of eastbound at Highway 92 is open at this time. Okay, great. Yeah. The only thing is like 92 still has water, but 90 itself at that intersection, you can be able to move through there. But it's going to be slow eastbound and the traffic light is still not functioning. All righty. So it is a four-way stop. We'll keep you updated um, right here. Uh, We'll continue. We'll take a break. Continue uh, just a little bit more. Get into Fox News Sunday to take us to the top of the hour. Sounds great. Sounds good to you. All right. Stay with us.